Here's a couple more poems from um, this uh, book of mine from 1992, uh, The Man with Night Sweats, um, of which a large section is about uh, friends I, uh, <coughs> I lost uh, to who died of AIDS. Um, this, I suppose, is an indirect poem about that subject. It's called Her Pet. Uh, I had, um, I was reading, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an autodidact, I'm always trying to educate myself on elementary subjects that I should have learned about when I was 20. And I was reading a penguin book by Michael Levy called High Renaissance, learning about Renaissance art. Uh, and uh, I came across an illustration in it by a Renaissance sculptor I'd never heard of uh, before called Germain Pilon. And, um, the, this was of a tomb. The sculpture was of a, a, a tomb for a lady I've also never heard of in any other connection called Valentine Balbiani. I, I mention this because I bring her name into the, into the poem. On the top of the tomb, there is sculptured her figure, as in life. Uh, she's reclining, reading from a book, and since it's from the Renaissance, we know that the book must have been a prayer book. And then there's a charming detail of this little dog that's trying to get into her lap. And... Um, then on the same page, there is reproduced uh, another detail of the same tomb. This is a, a panel farther down uh, showing in bas relief what she looked like in death, which is very different. This takes place in San Francisco in August, and so it's very foggy outside. Her pet. I walk the floor read, watch a cop show, drink, hear buses heave uphill through drizzling fog, then turn back to the pictured book to think of Valentine Balbiani and her dog. She is reclining, reading on her tomb, but pounced, it tries to intercept her look, its front paws on her lap, as in this room, the cat attempts to nose beneath my book. Her curls tight, breasts held by her body's high, rough, crisp, mouth calm, hands long and delicate, all in the paws of marble signify a strength so lavish she can limit it. She will not let her pet dog catch her eye for dignity or for a touch of wit. Below, from the same tomb, is reproduced a side relief in which she reappears without her dog and everything is loosed. Her hair down from the secret of her ears, her big ears, and her creased face genderless, craning from sinewy throat. Death is so plain. Her breasts are low knobs through the unbound dress. In the worked features, I can read the pain she went through to get here, to shake it all, thinking at first that her full nimble strength hid like a little dog within recall, till to think so she knew was to pretend, and hope dismissed, she sought out pain at length, and labored with it to bring on its end. <laughs> 